Hi guys, Blake here today with Lily's Landing Resort and Marina on beautiful Lake Tanicomo. It is, uh, <laughs> it's Saturday, October the 30th, and I'm going to do the one cast for you today. Today I've boated up, I'm uh, right above River Bluff Estates boat ramp, uh, kind of over here towards the south bank. I'm going to start off with a PJ's 125th ounce finesse jig, orange head, sculpin body. I've got that with a two pound leader and one of our weighted indicators. You got a little lead weight on the bottom there. I've got that set about three and a half, four foot deep right now. And uh, we got a decent little chop out here on the water. So I'm going to just start right here. Um, let's see here. A little interesting turn of events today. I don't know if I said this is going to be the one cast, but this is going to be the one cast. Uh, interesting turn of events today. So they actually decided to turn the water on. The schedule said that they were supposed to turn it on at 9 a.m. and run it until 1 and then shut it off for the rest of the day and the night. And uh, they actually didn't stick to what they said. They were running it at 7.30 this morning when I got out there to fish. Um, and they ran it, well, it's just now turning off and we're past 2 o'clock. So they turned it on early this morning and left it running a little longer than they said they were going to. Um, we haven't had running water in the morning. They've always ran it in the afternoon for the last two months. Uh, so having that running water this morning was interesting. Uh, I went up ready to uh, fish some small jigs under floats up in the trophy area to start. Uh, and then was going to switch to dragging some scuds whenever the water came on. Well, it was already on. So uh, we drug scuds this morning. Uh, wound up with a 20, 20 inch rainbow on a scud, kind of first thing this morning. Nothing officially on the first cast. Uh, it was still a slower bite. We had to work for them. Uh, but we were dragging primarily size 12 and size 14 scuds. Um, the water was running probably a half unit or just a touch more first thing this morning. So we had those on with 16th ounce weights on about two and a half foot, maybe three foot of liter material, four pound line. Uh, when the water picked up faster, we switched over to uh, about four, four and a half foot liters and kept the same scuds. I wound up talking to Dwayne after he was done with his trip this morning and they drug scuds as well, but he said they used a two pound line and size 16 scuds and he said they did a little bit better than we did this morning. Um, so maybe the uh, smaller scuds would have been, would have been better. He said he thought the two pound line was making a difference, which might have also been why we didn't uh, get into as many fish, but we still boated some. And then later, uh, around 10.30 or so, we switched to dragging jerk baits once the water was running the full 78 megawatts. And uh, we caught the rest of our fish dragging jerk baits. So that was working while the water was going. Uh, seemed like I saw some people out this morning that were uh, going with scuds under floats. And they seemed to be hooking up every time we saw them. So uh, the running water and the scud bite was good this morning. Uh, the other day when Phil uh, did the one cast, he said he stopped here with this PJ's finesse jig here at River Bluff Estates. 
and uh, city caught three or four just real quick. And the only difference between when he did it and when I did it was time of day and the cloudiness. Today we got the sun out now. We started off pretty cloudy this morning. But uh, there is a good chop on the water. And I'm uh Even though there's a good chop on the water, I'm still moving my indicator quite a bit. Just kind of giving it a few pulls and letting it set for a second and then a few more pulls. They seem to be liking that action. Dwayne mentioned that he's doing best whenever they really move the jig around or the pink power worm around. Um, so I'm giving that float some extra movement Trying to get them enticed here. Scoot in a little closer to this dock that's right above the boat ramp. See some fish hitting over here in the shade line. They might even be midgen over there. There's a fish. Aha! You know, sometimes casting at the fish that are jumping and moving around doesn't do you any good, but sometimes that's exactly what you needed. Come here, buddy. Oh. <laughs> He's gonna make me use the Phil said he stopped here at River Bluff Estates a few times this last week and has done fairly good every time he stopped here. Well, I'm just going to keep casting over there at that shade line. I'm not sure if the fish know quite what to do with the sun poking out finally today. We've had those colder, cloudy, rainy days for the last three, three days or so now. And uh, I haven't seen the sun in a few days, so. Oh, that was a fish. Definitely some fish over here. I might even need to shallow my indicator up a little bit. It's turning out to be a beautiful day today though. Uh, it's supposed to be like 64 degrees is the high. Turn the camera around. So as you get in near these docks over here, after you go past the boat ramp, uh, it gets quite a bit shallower. I'm actually going to set this about a foot shallower because all the fish I see moving are up 
closer to the bank. Nice with that a little too shallow. There we go. These weighted indicators are a great way to be able to cast small jigs like this on a spin cast setup. I give you that extra weight you need. And as long as you're not fishing, you know, deeper than the than your rod is long, there was a fish. I didn't even move it. Um, then it shouldn't be too hard to cast. Now, once you get into needing to fish it underneath the indicator, but you're fishing seven, eight, nine foot deep, having that longer spin cast rod is, comes into play. And you still want to use a, you know, weighted indicator to get it cast out there. But as long as you're fishing less depth than your long, than your rod is long, um, should be able to just get away with the weighted indicator like this. And you can always do this method on your fly rod too and just use a little, you know, foam indicator or This morning before the water had gotten all the way down here, Captain Philip Stone gave me the thumbs up that he was catching fish on night crawlers and they were actually, I don't know, they were somewhere out in this area, if I remember right. Beautiful, beautiful Saturday we have here. The trees are, even though we've had all the rain, they're still uh, decently colorful, decently green too. But we're starting to get some of those real good fall colors going on. I think Nathan posted some pictures he took around the resort today on the Facebook page. Um, I think it's important to have the, the two pound leader go into the jig here. <clears throat> uh, it was making a difference for Dwayne having it even when the water was running, dragging the scuds today. So um, <clears throat> they have even better visibility when the water's off than they do when it's running. So uh, making sure you have that small leader material go into your flyer jig is important. I thought I was on to something there. I missed a couple bites.
I'm kind of curious as to why they turned the water on this morning instead of sticking to the same schedule in the afternoon. Maybe something to do with power demand, possibly. I've been on spot lock. I'm gonna start moving down towards the, oh, there's a fish. Moving down towards the dock here. Looks like there's a good shade line, which is where I just caught this fish at. Going in front of the dock there and in front of the boat ramp. Another one about equal size here. Definitely some fish uh, jumping around over here. Oh man, I hope that camera hasn't been down like that for very long. Sorry. I'm hoping that just happened whenever I got down to pick up that fish. I think Phil did really good on this jig uh, maybe a week or so ago up in the trophy area too just from the golf course down with this orange headed 125th ounce sculpin jig. That wind is blowing me directly away from the bank. I think one of the most important things with this though is that you find that good chop. That chop really helps them not be able to see everything that's going on when you're fishing the jig. Almost the end of October. Crazy, crazy to think about. 2021 is coming to an end. Looks like the wind's gonna blow me around the other way now. <sighs> this spot where the boat ramp is is kind of on a inside bend right on the latter part of it and uh, it's got a really good flat coming off here from this dock down the other side of the boat ramp and then it's got a real nice drop off just kind of right here behind the boat uh, just good structure good layout for for fish in general but the trout do seem to like this this spot on the lake
I think the river state, river state of here uh, allows people to pay a fee and use their boat ramp, um, as far as I understand. And uh, not a not a bad spot to come and pay and park and even wade right here on this flat whenever the uh, water's turned off. Okay, we're gonna go just a couple more casts and I gotta get back to the dock to relieve Ryan for the day. But uh, honestly, I think all the way down through here or even up by the mouth of Fall Creek or anywhere where you can find some good chop and you don't have to fish it super deep. Maybe a shade line like we got over there. A flat to a drop. <clears throat> You can find some chop in any of those kind of spots. Uh, the, uh, the micro jigs and the finesse jigs have been performing pretty well with the water off. Just kind of got to adjust your depth for where you're fishing. If I wanted to fish this deeper part out here where the boat's at, I'd probably need to, you know, set it at oh six seven foot but right now i'm primarily just focusing on that shade line where those fish are coming up and surfacing so i know that the water over there is only in the three to four foot depth so try to get that jig near the bottom And don't forget to move it around. <clears throat> Dwayne was telling me that you don't want to jerk the bobber so hard that it's making a pop, but if you can just kind of wake the bobber across the water and get that jig moving, that seems to be working for him. I think that last cast I tangled my jig. I hit the roof of that dock over there. There we go. All right, last cast. Okay, well, I think we're going to call it a day there, guys. We appreciate you watching, and we'll be out here again to do it tomorrow. Thank you.